on Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And we really preached that the first part of the chapter. I think I spent like three or four minutes in verses 5 and 6, which which was fine because the Lord really kind of got in that and helped us last night and helped me definitely. And I love when God helps me with the Bible. And as of late, I don't feel like there's any other help any other place. Uh, It doesn't matter what news channel I turn it to anymore. You know, it used to be the same thing all the time, but now it's just, it's out of, it's, it's utterly ridiculous that someone would tune into those stations for so long to hear the same craziness. And, and I'm glad the Lord has a book. I'm glad that he, that he has a, a book for me. And I found this one uh, in my, my, we have a case where we keep all our Bibles. And this was the Bible that they gave me when I graduated Bible college from the, from the, the pastor and the, the, uh, the dean of students and the president and the vice president. And two of the four people that are in this book that signed it, that I was very happy to sign it, Brother Michael, were, are, are off in left field right now, uh, just kind of have, have decided to do their own thing. They're, they're into stuff that they shouldn't be. They're fa- they've lost their families. Uh, they've, they've been, and they, they, if they heard me saying this, they would say, I didn't lose my family. Well, you sure did. You lost your family. They, their kids are off. Uh, searching for things that have nothing to do with God anymore. And, and it has a lot to do with what I'm going to tell you tonight, and, and I want you to understand tonight. And so in this, cha- this chapter, it's David who is writing this, and, and David says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, uh, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. And I don't really know if there's anybody in here tonight that is really fretting or uh, coming uh, uh, apart because of people that are doing the wrong thing. But I know that there are people in here tonight that are fretting and coming apart because of the evil one because of what the devil is trying to do. And he does a lot. He, he works behind the scenes in, in many different ways to, to uh, get a hold of your heart and to get a hold of your mind and to get you worrying. And, and God doesn't want us to. He says, fret not. Don't fret about it. And he gives us some very good things in the word of God here. And so the other day, uh, my family and I, on Monday, we were able to go with Brother Jim Fully Love and Miss Elisa and their family down to uh, Chesapeake Bay, down 55, down through Jersey to go crabbing. And uh, we had been crabbing years ago. Matter of fact, Paul and, and, and I don't know if anybody's left in the church, the men in the church that went crabbing with us years ago with Stephen Cruz and Leo and Hayward and Paul. But when we, went, when we went crabbing with them, it was fun. We had a good time. Well, this time we went and uh, we, we, what you do is you get in this water. It's about this deep and you put cane poles in the, in the ground and you, you take a piece of string with a piece of chicken on the end of it. You drop it out there. Who's ever been crabbing like that before? Raise your hand. And so you just pull that chicken. You lift that thing up because you see the rope moving. And then you take a big net about this big and you, you pull it up and you scoop the crab up and you throw it in. And so we had a great time with that. It was out there about nine hours and uh, it was a cloud cover. And it was nice. And uh, we went back to Brother Jim's father's house to cook the crabs. You know, when you catch some crab, we didn't eat our crabs that time. We were too tired. Nobody cleaned them, ate them. And, and so when we got back, this time we went to Brother Fully Loves to clean the crab and eat the crab. And so Pastor Fully Love is uh, 61 years old. No Brother Fully Love since, since I've been in the Northeast. He's a great man of God, pastor of the Mays Landing Baptist Church, a, a small church, but, but a great church, and, and he's a blessing. And me and him have, have not been the best of friends, but when we're together, we talk, we seem to have a lot in common. It's pretty awesome. And, and so when I got there, um, everybody was going different ways to clean crabs. The kids were going to jump in the lake, and Brother Jim was cleaning crabs, and, and Brother Fully Love and I started talking. And, and it was really good. And uh, he had just had a triple bypass not long ago, almost died. And, and his health's been kind of down, but he's getting better. And uh, we're standing there talking about the ministry. 
But then we got off talking about our own selves spiritually. Uh, and of course, I'm an honest person. He's an honest person. So we both admitted to each other that we don't do as well as we want to do spiritually. You see, I'm good at, at preaching about it. And, and and you may not think I'm good at it, but I am good at preaching about it and, and, and different things. But I struggle just like you do with spiritual things. And 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 then Brother Fully Love did, and he he began to say stuff that really helped me because he began to admit, and he's saying, you know, Bert, when I I just I just get down sometimes. And we began to talk, and we we had a great conversation there. And we finally his wife comes out, why don't you guys sit down? We we're just standing there. So we sat in these chairs and and just sat and talked while everybody played. And and uh he told me, he said he was recently out in um uh, in Colorado visiting with his, uh, his uh, son-in-law and his daughter and their family, and they, they got to go west to see the, uh, I believe they went and saw the redwood trees, and that they went to, uh, uh, what's that thing, that big mountain with all the presidents on it? Mount Rushmore, and, and then they went to Pikes Peak down in uh, Colorado, which is 14,000 feet up in the air. It's a mountain, pretty famous deal. And uh, he said he was there that night in the hotel room or in wherever they were staying in the cabin. He started getting very, very tunnel vision. I don't know if you've ever passed out in here, but when you pass out, man, you start getting tunnel vision, and then all of a sudden it's almost like you just know you're going down. And I understand how that feels. I've done that before, and and uh, and and Kara and, and other people. But he said, "Man, my heart started really beating really bad, and I really got scared." And he just had these heart attacks. And he says, "I didn't want to wake my wife up because I know she's going to make me go to the hospital, and I, I don't want that. I want to ruin the vacation. I don't want to mess everything up." And that's why he's thinking. And he's but he's he's worrying. He's like, "Man, I don't know. I, I don't know." And he said, Burton, I just, I just grabbed my Bible. I sat down and I said, Lord, please help me. And he, and he says, I, I don't do this often, but I just let it fall open. And it fell open to Psalm 37. And he said, and, and, and I started reading about fretting. And then I started reading about trusting. And then I started reading about delighting and committing. And he says, and as I read that, God slowed my heart now. And I began to get comfort. And he said, you know, Burton, I'm not trying to sound super spiritual, but, but God comforted me with his word that night. And, and, and later on, Miss Bonnie would be talking, and she's, she's a Jersey girl, and, and she, she said, did he tell you what he did? And I go, uh-uh. And she goes, he didn't tell us he, almost, he was having a hard time in there. We should have took him to the hospital. And, of course, I knew the end of the, that he said God got a hold of him in that book. And she was mad at him because that's his wife and she doesn't want nothing to happen to him. But what the interesting thing is he said, I got everything I needed from that book. Now, I can relate to that, but not as much as I want to be able to relate to that. But it has happened at times. I've never just opened it and said, God, give me something. I'm hurting. Uh, I've heard of people it falling on the floor, people picking it up and seeing right where it's at and and I believe, honestly, that you can open that book anywhere, Amen. and it would be really good for you. Yep. There'll be something on that page for you. But when Brother Fully Love said that, and then we kept talking, and he started saying stuff, and we had such a great conversation because it was about the Bible, and I don't, I don't have those conversations with every preacher. Sometimes we don't talk about anything that has to do with God, and I don't, I, don't, I don't like that per se anymore. I want to talk about God. Uh, but... He started talking, and he said, you know, what, what do you think the key is, Brother Burton, to our ministries? You know, he says, I've been there 25 years, and it's good. It just, it's it just not, you know, it's not like Pastor Clark and them's church. And he wasn't comparing or nothing. He just thought, you know, what's the difference there, you think, Burton? And I said, but full of love, I don't know. I don't know if God wants us all to have big churches or if God's interested in that. I, I said, Brother, full of love, uh, our church right now is kind of in a spiritual drought. And, and I believe that. And you say, well, who's the church? People in the church. 
including me, and I'm the leader, so I'm not trying to say it's all y'all, and I'm trying to dig us out, but, I'm, but, I, but I feel like the Lord's kind of been leading me to try to dig and prod, and, and God's been moving in our messages. Everything we've been preaching has been right what God needed to give us, and, and I say, and he, and he says, I just don't know what the secret was. And then he brought up a man named D.L. Moody, and I said this last night, I believe, at the, at the Bible study. D.L. Moody was a man who shook two continents in the early 1900s, he was a preacher. Matter of fact, in Chicago today, there's a place called the Moody Institute. That he had his own Bible college. He's, he's very famous. He went over and won, won thousands of people to the Lord in England and America, and, and God was all over him. Now, listen to me. Moody was a very unlearned speaker, uh, not very articulate, not very uh, well-spoken, but God used him big time. And there's a man named R.A. Torrey. Maybe, maybe some of you have read some of his books. If you haven't, I'd say read any book that has R.A. Torrey's own name on it. I like it. And um, they asked R.A. Torrey, who was a very intellectual man, who worked for D.L. Moody as his assistant, and they said, why would you, someone like you, so, so educated and so learned, be the assistant for a man like that? And, and R.A. Torrey said, because God has all of D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody made a statement, Brother Paul, what was it? I've yet to see. What, do you remember the statement? Yeah, the world is yet to see what God can do with one man totally sold out to him. That's what D.L. Moody's famous statement was. And, and Ari Torrey said this about him, and this is unbelievable. He said, the, only, the other thing is that D.L. Moody cared for the souls of men. Now, listen to me. I don't know which way the message is going to go tonight, but I want you to know, when he said that, I thought, man, that's awesome. And I've been praying, God, help me to care for the souls of man. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to have a number. I don't want, I've known people through the years that, man, I've won 14 to Christ last week, and they could care less about any of that. They just want people to applaud them. My Bible college gave out awards for it. Sick. I mean, just, just and that's why I don't have a Bible college anymore. And, 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 and so he cared for the souls of men. So then later we're sitting at dinner and we're eating together. Everybody's together. And when you eat blue crab, who's ever eaten blue crabs? I, 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 I just discovered that taste-wise, my, that's my favorite crab now. It's the sweetest. It's unbelievable. But it's little. <laughs> and it takes a lot of work to get to that crab meat. I'm used to king crabs where you pop them open, there's this big old thing in there, and you eat it. And, and, and have you ever eaten blue crabs with Paul, Miss Candy? Oh, we're, we're going to go crabbing, and we're going to get them, and we're going to put you right in the middle of that water with that yes. cane pole, Miss Candy. It's going to be awesome. And uh, yeah. Hey, listen to this. You lift the thing up with the net, and, and listen to this. It's hilarious. Dale had an eel in his, and, and he's got the net. He goes, I got an eel. And the eel, I'm not kidding, about this long, jumped out of that net and landed right next to him. And he's like, I got an eel. <laughs> I mean, his face, and I'm, I'm laughing at him. Anyways, those, those, those crabs, you sit there. So the good thing about the red crab and the blue crab is you know how sometimes you have people over to dinner and it takes you 10 minutes to eat and it's over? And, and that may be good for some folks. Well, this was the one where we kept working. And so we sat there about an hour talking. And Brother Fully Love told me the story. I met his dad earlier that day who's like 86 years old. And Brother Fully Love said, I don't remember how many years it was, like 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Brother Clark, Brother Clark led Brother Fully Love to the Lord, first of all. He's 61. And that's the only church Brother Fully Love's ever known is Pastor Clark. And then Brother Clark led his dad to the Lord. And he was telling a story about these guys in the town years and years ago, how they were, they were drinkers, but Brother Clark would always witness to them. And this one guy gets saved at the church at Solid Rock, but he was kind of a wild guy, motorcycle rider, all this stuff. Pastor Clark passed through motorcycle gangs, basically, in the early stages of that church. And, and not gangs, but motorcycle guys. And, and uh, he said uh, this guy was, got saved, but he was still kind of dibbling and dabbling with stuff. So he's over at this house like 11 o'clock at night. And I believe Brother Fully Loves Dad or some of this, so they're all tied together here, was there. And they called Pastor Clark at 11 o'clock at night and said, 
you got to come over here. These guys need you to witness to them. So Pastor Clark, man, got in his car 11 o'clock at night to go to a bunch of drinkers with a Bible and witness to them. And somewhere in that thing, Pastor Fully Love's dad got saved. And, and he looked at me, and at that moment it clicked. I said, Brother Fully Love, I got it. And, and I reverted back to our conversation. I said, that's why God's blessed him, because he cares. He said this. He goes, Pastor Clark cares for the souls of man. He said, Burton, if he were preaching in California and a church member called him and needed him, he would walk out of the pulpit and say, I'm sorry, but I've got to go. I'm a pastor and I'm going home. And he would do that. And I thought, man, that's, that's an incredible thing right there. Uh, to, to know that and to have that conversation with Pastor Fully Love. And, and I text him today and said, man, I'm, I'm preaching your passage the best I can tonight. And I'm not going to get, I, there's only a couple of things I really want to say in here. I, I have probably a hundred verses to look at, but we're not going to look at them. But in Psalm chapter number 37, it says, don't fret because of the evil ones. And I'm telling you tonight, don't fret because of the evil one. The devil hates you. He hates us. And a lot of times he will sell you, sell you a bunch of lies about the enemy. And the enemy is not who you think it is, breathing and stuff. It's him. And then uh, the flesh is wicked also. Our flesh will sell us lies. Brother Fully Love said, Burton, I'm 61, but I still believe the greatest days of our church are ahead of me, and I still believe God can use me, and I just want to get after it again. He goes, my health's kind of messed up, but I want to get back in this thing. And I said, Brother Fully Love, I do too. I do too. I really do. And, and Brother Fully Love can look at Pastor Gates from a distance. He, he said, man, it's good to see your son lead music at the new church because it's on Facebook, so he sees that. Uh, it's good to see God blessing over there, Brother Gates. And, and, and people can look at me from a distance and say, man, what a, what a great success. But I'm just going to tell you, I don't, I don't look at me as a great success. I, I never have. I, I can sometimes start believing those lies when people have me preaching places and, and introducing me and saying things. But what I think is my greatest success or will be my greatest success is going to be in the future of today, not the past. And what I think is going to help that most of all is for me not to fret. And listen to me, God is not through with you. Our best days are not when we were a young church and everybody was just getting used to it and, and things were happening in here. No, our best days are ahead of us. And, and he says, fret not. And then in verse number three, he says it, and it's, it's such a great statement, and if you're not careful, you'll, you'll miss it. Trust in the Lord and do good. Well, you would think that God would only have to say, Brother Ito, trust in the Lord. And if we trust in the Lord, we know to do good. But God says, trust in him and do something, do good, do good in, in, in many different, we can, we can look at this in a lot of different ways and, and God would tell each individual in this room what he wants you to do good in, in. but I already know one of them is, is to show brotherly love, but then also, uh, you know, I was reading in Proverbs uh, the 24th, and I, I'm not even sure what day that was. Uh, maybe it was two days ago or something. And, and it says this, and this, this caught my eye. Uh, I read one yesterday at the church, but that's not the one I'm going to read to you now. But look what it says in Proverbs 24 and verse number 11. It says, if thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Hey, trust in the Lord and do good. 
do good unto the brethren, but listen, we have a big responsibility as a church. It, 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 there's no excuse for us anymore. And 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 and, and brother Paul and brother Jr. and 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 brother Jesse and 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 then and, 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 and brother Hector and, and and everybody here that is called to full time service. And by the way, everybody in here is called to full time service. It's Lisa and and and, and Tania and there's so many others I could stay state Miss Kesley and Emily and all the ones that I believe that brother Eustace and his family and and, and so many things I can say here tonight. Listen to me, if we forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and we say we didn't know it, God ponders the heart. God's the one that knows the soul and he brings that into account. And, and listen, we have to trust in the Lord and do something. Now, listen to me, most of us have trouble with just the trust in the Lord, me included now. This is not me knocking you down and saying you need to trust in the Lord. I have trouble trusting in the Lord. But I've got to get up every day. And I brought Paul, I've got to say, God, I want to trust in you. I, I want to follow you, Lord. And, and listen, when I start talking like that as of late, and, 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 and not just the Brother Fuller, that was Monday. I mean, that was three days ago. I've been talking to us about souls for this year, really, and then really a lot this last month. And, and, and I've, I've, I've not said, raise your hand if you want someone to Christ, because I know the letdown that would be in, uh, for me and, and, and for you. But if we forbear to deliver them, and they're all around us, people need the Lord. Uh, I, I, I like showing up to church and Brother Ito and Miss Lisa saying, hey, Pastor, we, got, we need to help somebody. And, 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 and I'm running late and I'm thinking we do need to and I, and I kind of got off of it, but I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be able to help somebody. But the most important thing we can do is not a program in Richmond, Virginia. It's Get the Lord inside of that person. Give them an opportunity to see who Christ is. And, and listen, that, that's important. The, the emphasis on, uh, on bringing people to church, that's always supposed to be there. But the emphasis on leading the Lord is always supposed to be there too. So we trust in the Lord and we do good. But fully love said, Burton, you know, I just, I just know me. I know who I am. And and, and I, I want to do so much more. I want to do. I want to do. And then he, he began to tell me some things about uh, certain things going on where it would lead us to, the, I'm not going to discuss all of this, but uh, trusting. And, and as, I, as I read those verses, as, when he told me about it, I know these verses very well. I've, I've prescribed these verses to people when they're having a tough time especially when they think evil people are making it. But I'm just going to tell you tonight, trust in the Lord and do good. And, and do something for the Lord. Make sure that you are, you are, hey, listen, God's plan for our lives is to sit here, get the word of God in our lives, worship some, sing for God for heaven's sakes, sing to the Lord, think about him, and then make sure that we do good to somebody. Uh, I met, I, I, there was people that visited here Sunday, Rel and Tamika went over there and visited him. And he said, we're trying to do, do some good things for people. We're really trying. If you're getting sleepy, stand up now. He, he, we're trying to do some good things for people. And we're trying to give out. We like to, and then they and, and, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, like I always think, I'm thinking, well, we, we really need to get the Lord in. We don't need to, 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 to fund anybody's drug addiction. The way the transgressor is hard, we need to get them to a place where they can't get anything and then they reach out to the Lord. But I thought, man, this, this guy, his focus, and maybe he was saying it for me, I don't think he was. He said, we just want to do good for people. We want to be good to people. And, and that's the person that, 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 that just started coming here. Hey, listen, where are you at with this thing of, of trusting in the Lord and doing good? Trusting is to be confident in God. 
And listen, when he says and do good, it's a conjunction that puts it all together. Trust them and do something. And do good. Not, not trust them and go to work. Not trust him and go home. Not trust him and watch a movie. Not trust him and go to Six Flags. Not trust him and go crabbing. Not trust him and go fishing. Trust them and do something. And that, that's where we, we really got to think about ourselves tonight. We have 24 hours in a day. We know a lot of people more than handing them a card and saying, I want to give you an invite. They need to know the God of the invite. We need to get as much as we can get out to them as we talk to them. Trust in the Lord and do good. And it says, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You say, well, Pastor, I got to go to work. What for? Why? Well, I got to put food on the table. Well, man, everybody's got to put food on the table. So God just says if we'll trust in him and we'll do good, Hey, listen, what if you were as good a Christian as you are an employee? Man, that'd be, that'd be an unbelievable church, really. Most people call in, call in sick on Sunday, go to work on Monday. Most people uh, go all week to work and stay home and sleep. Hey, but that's not trusting the Lord, and that's not doing good. And then you will not be able to dwell in the land like God wants you to dwell in the land. And you will not be fed like God wants you to be fed. I, I'm just telling you now, uh, I, I think about those crabs. Cra crabs are expensive. I, I mean, I think uh, me and KK and Dale and Kara and Millie were in Florida on vacation. I don't know if I told this story, but... We went to a restaurant the very first night, and KK's like, Daddy, can I get the crab legs? And, and I'm like, yeah, go ahead. You know, we just started the vacation, so we still got some money, and we're like, yeah, it's going to be great. And she goes, I'm just going to get the snow crab. So snow crab, that's no big deal, right? That'll be a, that's not gonna be, I know it's probably going to be $20 or $30. It's going to be okay. KK, do it. It'll be fine. It said market price. I said, man, just bring them, ma'am. It's good. And they were, these, these crab legs were, were, were mediocre at best. I mean, when I say mediocre, some of the legs, they just, they just, they weren't really that. KK, they were good. KK liked them. And, and now she's finding out that they weren't the best. Because when I saw them, I'm like, man, those are good, ain't they, KK? And I'm thinking, you know, and when we got the bill, guess how much your crab, that little one pound of crab leg was? $80. That's what I thought. I went, What? And to, to top it off, the waitress felt like she had to cuss with us the whole time. My kids look at me. I'm like, she's lost. She, she just, that's a lost people act. And we're going we're gonna to be nice. We're just going to try to live, ride it out with her. She wasn't F-bombing or nothing, but she was saying stuff. And, but you know what? That didn't, that didn't set us back the week. It didn't hurt us. You know, and, and I'm not saying God funded my vacation, but I think he did. I think God, I think I, I, I like to get away, and especially with my family, and leave the phones in the room and, and not, not be looking at them the whole time. And that's very rare. My kids are so tired of seeing me drive down the road with that phone in my hand. And mama, and, and, and I'm thinking, man, I need to stop this, but I don't stop it. Hey, listen to me. When I got those crabs the other day, we had 50 of them. That wasn't a great catch, but it was good enough because, first of all, KK said, Daddy, I tried to get some out of it. I just gave up. Because it takes some time to get a, red, a blue crab. I mean, those are the, the, you know, there ain't a whole bunch in there. But if you take your time and pull it apart. And I thought, I thought to my kids, isn't this good? This is, this is God being good to us. We just went into a, a little marsh and pulled out good food for very little money. And, and it was an awesome time. Me and Dale were, were driving down the road the other day. And you guys know Brother Mattis, Ch Chuck Mattis. He pastors down in West Virginia. He supports our church plant here. He's come up here several times. He sent us a, I got a call from him, but I didn't answer it. And I read, I read the text, and, and I thought, that's interesting. So I turned it on. Me and Dale are listening to it. 
Say, oh, Brother Burton, this is Brother Mattis down in West Virginia. Just want to let you know it's not, it's not no spiritual talk, but there's a man in my church who has a son. His birthday's coming up in February, and he wants to go to a Boston Celtic game. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, and he says, but they're playing the Sixers on the 25th, which is a Saturday at 830 in February. He said, but the man wants to know if you and Dale want to go, and he wants to take care of the tickets, but he needs to know real quick because he wants to get the best seats possible. And I was just messing with it. I said, you want to go to that? And he's like, uh, yeah. And so I called Brother Mattis, and he said, we're going to get good seats. And he said, it's Saturday, Brother Burns. So I hate to do that to you on a Saturday night before church. And I'm not, I don't like doing that anything on a Saturday night that late. So I said, Brother Mattis, don't worry about it. You're going to preach that morning. It'll be fine. I'm not preaching. I'm going to the ball game. And Brother Mass was a missionary in Kenya. He's a great pastor, a great missionary. Didn't he lead your dad to the Lord or your dad lead him? They went to the same church. They went to the same church together with Paul's dad. And it's going to be good. But you know what? I said, Dale, I tried to teach you, Dale, that's the goodness of God on us. I mean, that, that, that may not be a big thing to anybody else. But to me, that was like God saying, you know, I could go work. I could go buy a basketball ticket for Dale. I could do a lot of stuff for Dale if I really tried. But when God does stuff like that through a godly man, and you see, you think God wants you to go to a basketball game? Well, the world is wicked everywhere. And, and listen to me, I think we can go and hand out tracts to everybody around us and talk to them and, and, and try to do something like, hey, that's the goodness of God. Trust in the Lord and do good. And, 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 and verily thou shalt dwell in the land and thou shalt be fed. That's what God wants to do. So you trust him, and, and I'm not going to get where I wanted to here, but, but it's okay. We're going to roll through these very quickly, and we're done. Hey, listen, do you want God's life for you? I'm just asking because I don't believe that everybody does. I'm not talking about in this room. I hope to God everybody in this room wants his life. But I'm, I promise you, I go enough places where I know I can tell while I'm preaching what's going on in their lives. And they're not interested. They're doing this, Brother Ito, while I preach. And, and that doesn't affect me at all. It, it, I think, man, I, I'd hate to be that one. If I ever look at my clock while a preacher's preaching, sometimes I want to know what time it is, and, and, but I'm not because I'm trying to go home. I, but I'm like, I don't want anybody to see me. I don't want the preacher to see me. I don't want my wife to see me. I'm like. But these folks are like, you know what they don't want? They don't want God's life. This is a special time for us to sit here and talk about trusting the Lord and, and, and understanding that the peace that this book, just these little words opened up can bring to the heart. It slowed his heart down from racing. It made him not wake his wife up. The peace, he took the tunnel vision away and he began to uh, be engulf himself in these verses. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Most people preach it like this, brother. He took delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desire of thy, desires of thine heart. But it doesn't say delight thyself in the Lord. It says delight thyself also. So you got to trust him. You got to do good. And then you've got to delight in it. Why does he have to tell us this? Because we're all made of flesh. And because we're all flesh at best. They're, they're, listen to me. I know, I know some Christians that I think, man, they're, they're awesome. They're usually really old ones. That, that I really think, man, God's on that guy. And every word that comes out of their mouth is about the Lord. I want that life. I want it just to be about him. And, and I, 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 I wish, I honestly wish I could just let Brother Paul run everything, make all the major decisions in this church, and me just... Read and pray and talk to people and not worry about nothing. That's not what God called me to do. So the most important thing I can do, Brother Eustace, is I got to trust in him. And then I got to do good. And then I'll dwell like God wants me to dwell. And then I'll be fed the way God wants me to feed. 
I've heard it so many times. Hey, listen, you're devoting too much time to that job. You need to devote that time to your children. And they'll say, well, I got to provide for my family. Well, I don't find that in here. I find that God will provide. I'm not saying you shouldn't work, but listen, God first, family second, and then the church. And what I mean by the church is I'm talking about the people of the church because God first puts you in this place, puts you walking with him. That's God first. There's no other way to put God first without his word, without his church, and without, without the preaching, teaching, and reading, and, and praying, and fellowshipping. And then your family has to come next. And that's for any preacher, never the church before the family. Your family. And, and they got to be fed, but God will feed them. And then it says, delight thyself also. Hey, listen, how do you delight yourself in the Lord? Well, obviously, if God's telling us to do it, Brother Paul, then it probably will not come naturally if God is telling us in many times in the Bible. He says this, though. If you don't walk with evil people, if you don't sit with evil people, or, 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 or uh, blessed man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful, no, no standeth in the presence, or standeth and sitteth in the seat of scornful. If you don't do that, then he says, his delight is in the law of the Lord. The delight. Listen, I wonder how many people in this room really think, look at me now. I'd love to have us raise our hands if we could be honest, and it would be, it would be very, very sad. How many of us really find delightfulness in this book? Or how many of us, it's a job that you have to get up and read? But that's because you're, you're in the wrong places, with the wrong people, with the wrong focus, with the wrong things. And, and you won't delight in it. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Don't just trust them. Delight thyself in him. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Well, I got to work. I got to do this. I ain't got time for this. You know why? Because you're trying to get the desires of your heart yourself. And it may work uh, for, your, for your carnal appetite, your fleshly appetite. But how about delighting thyself in the Lord and get the desires that God wants for you? God can do that. And then it says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. So there it is again. And he shall bring it to pass. Commit. Brother Burton, what's this got to do with everything we've been doing? Well, come out from among them and be ye separate. That's the only way to live a life for the Lord. Being separate. That's the only way. You don't come out from among them, you'll never live a life for the Lord. Listen to me now. You don't come out from among them, you will never live a life for the Lord. He said, I don't, I don't like that. Well, it's just the truth. And then if, if you don't get spirit filled and put God first, you're never going to live a life for the Lord. And then if, if you don't get lowly in your Christian walk like we talked about Sunday night and you decide to stay prideful, you'll never live a life for the Lord. Some of y'all are mad right now for things that have been said to you because of pride and, and stuff like that. Listen, you will never walk with God like that. You have to allow God to touch you. Nothing anybody can say should be able to set you off apart from God. And, and, and then listen, if we'll separate and we'll get filled and we'll walk in a lowliness, and then we start trusting and, and we start delighting, and we commit, not start commit, we commit. You know, commit is not like I'm going to try to commit. That, that, that statement right there makes no sense in the English language. Matter of fact, it's an, it, it doesn't go together. I'm going to try to commit. No, you're either going to commit or not commit. And, and that's what we need tonight. That's what our church needs right now. Right now. This is for everything. 
Folks, as, as, as great as the preaching has been, as great as God has been meeting with us in this church, if we do not get it, and we only get it in March when Tony Shirley and, and different men show up with their briefcase full of, 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 of revival. And, and then I sit on the front row and listen to all y'all sing. And they think, they think, man, this awesome church. No, 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 sir. No, sir. This is awesome in March. Because the rest of the time, Brother Paul has to look at folks that look mad about singing a lot of the times. And that's not everybody, but some of most at times everybody here looks mad about singing. So I'm not letting anybody off the hook. Sometimes you just look mad. Hey, listen, but the reason being is because you you walk with ungodly and you will never delight. You don't come out from among them, you will always be with them. You don't get filled with the spirit, you're filled with yourself. You don't get lowly and realize that that is the only way to live the Christian life. You'll be prideful. And if you don't trust and do, delight and commit, you're never going where God wants you to go. Amen. That is, that is good, sound preaching. That is good Bible preaching. <coughs> And, and listen to me, the devil will work you over. What is the answer, Brother Gates? On your knees. God, I would love to come out. God, I want to be filled. God, I want to think less of myself and more of you. God, I want to trust you and I want to do. Lord, would you help me with that? And then God will strengthen you for that. But the day it comes every time of the day, at different times of the day, where you will have to do it. And if you don't, it doesn't work. You have to add to your faith. And, and it's not working in the flesh, it's being filled with the Spirit. I've never gotten close to God and wanted to do my own thing. But Paul, I've never gotten close to him and wanted my stuff. But it, it's impossible for a person to get close to God and want their own thing. But, but when I get close to God, and, and listen to this, some folks in church don't like me too much. I don't like some folks in the church too much sometimes. I'm human too. But when I get close to God, guess what he says about the folks in the church? He says, Burton, these are great folks, and they're all hurting. And you're a nobody. And don't let your pride get ate up because someone hurt your feelings. Or, or, and, and you allowed them to hurt your feelings. And they need God in their life, and you are the one that's going to... And listen, God breaks my heart for the people that... Just like Jesus on the cross. I'm not comparing me to Jesus, Brother Ito, but he, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Stephen said, Lord, lay this not to their charge. How does he do that? Because they're close to God, and, and people don't affect them. And, and so what does God want from us tonight? He wants us to trust in them and to do something. And, and I said that hundreds of verses I did. I have, I have at least 100 verses to quote about trusting. And, and, or not 100, I'm sorry, probably about 50. And it just says, trust, 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 trust in the Lord, 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 trust in Him, trust in Him. If you'll trust in the Lord, He's a buckler, He's a shield. If you'll trust in Him, if you offer the sacrifices of something that you'll be able to trust in Him. I mean, there's so many things in there. And then when he says, trust in the Lord and do good, that means we've got something to do. And do good to your fellow Christians. And we ought to, listen to me, if you don't do anything good for a brother or sister, listen to me now, I can't see how you can be in the will of God. And then if you don't do nothing outside of that, I can't see how you can be in the will of God. You cannot allow what you're allowing to stop you from trusting and doing. You have to break the cycle. 
And someone's got to say, you know what, I'm breaking it. I'm going to get up, I'm going to walk with the Lord, and I'm going to ask him to help me to delight. I'm going to ask him to help me to commit. I'm going to ask him to help me to trust in him. I'm going to ask him, Lord, help me to separate. Separation takes uh, some guts. You have to say, I really don't want to hang out with you anymore because you don't go where I go and you don't believe what I believe. See, that's most of people's problems today is because they're playing with fire and they're getting burned. You want the spirit of God? Well, you have to empty. You can't have you in there. And if, you, if you'll get rid of you, and, and boy, Brother Paul, I spend a lot of time lately saying, Lord, please get me out of here. Get me out, Lord. I don't want me. I don't want me. My kids don't want me. They, they want me, but they, my kids don't need me. They need a godly man that, that is focused in on the Lord. And so that's us tonight. Hey, you have a decision to make. Everything we've preached, it's a decision. I want to trust him and I want to do. I want to I want to make sure that I, that I ask him to help me to delight in him and I'll delight if I meditate in his word and if I don't hang out with the wrong people. God wants us to do that, but he wants us to do that also. And then if I'll commit my my way unto him, he'll bring it to pass. Bring what to pass? What we need truly. And so let's bow our heads. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the hope and the help that it brings. And God, thank you for preaching to me again tonight. Lord, I need this. Lord, I, I know that it is you speaking tonight. And Father, I, I want to have my full trust in you. And I want to, I want to be used of you, Lord. And but God, unfortunately, I just don't wake up naturally I have to put on some things. And you said if we put on Jesus, if we put you on, if we make no provisions for the flesh uh, and walk in the spirit, or if we crucify ourselves on a daily basis, if we would die daily like Paul said, if we'd refuse to believe our feelings, if we would turn to the, the truth of the word of God and allow it to be our guide, allow it to be our lead, it would help us so much. Father, I love you. We need you. We cannot make it without you, Lord. I pray that you would bless the invitation now. Pray that you'd have your will and way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Folks, you're at the altar. You could come and talk to the Lord tonight. He wants you. A deep relationship with the Lord is what a person needs. They don't need church. Listen, folks, everybody in this room, you cannot survive on this. You're, you're too old in the Christian life now. You've got to get something from him or you will be gone. Or you might just be like a southerner and sit in the church the rest of your life and do nothing for God. They're in our churches. I love my home church, but there are people in that church and they're never going to do anything. They're there. But man, wouldn't it be good if God got a hold of everybody? And, and that common denominator of Jesus and, 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 the, and the simple fact of God wants us to do something for him. Pulling people in from outside. That's a great thing. Uh, praying for folks being point blank in our direction with people I, I told Rel yesterday or whatever day it was I said um, man I really just came here to make sure you were saved I mean I want you to I want to know that tell me how you know and man it took a while and finally he gave the right answer and I said well that's great so you need to get into church you need, you need to get under the word. You need to get around some of our folks. Hey, listen, folks. You guys need to start opening up to these people that come in here that know anybody. I wonder how many have met our brother here tonight. Man, that's, there's no excuse for anybody to come in here and us not to shower them with love. That's all we did for you.
And, and most of the time, it was your pastor grabbing people in this church and saying, go over and talk to Rakim and meet him. I mean, that's what I do. I, I constantly see it. We got to all see it like that because people need the Lord, but people need these relationships, and we need that. And listen, that's doing good. Don't sit there and do nothing. The, the, the visitors ought to have a line lined up during the handshake trying to get to them. Instead, we sit around and talk to people we're sitting right next to in the church service the whole time that we've been talking to for all day, all week long, and we sit and talk, and listen, man, come on, do something. It's important. And listen, that what I'm telling you to do is not Bible College 101. Didn't hear it one time of Bible College. Make sure you talk to people in the service. That's take. That's that's something that's for. I mean, we take for granted. That, that, that's why we're going into the ministry. They didn't say, "Hey, when you have a service, make sure you go to people and tell them to go talk to the visitors." No, 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 man. People need to know. They need to leave here going. Those were the stinking friendliest people ever. And I can't wait to go back. I, I was hoping they'd be here tonight. I said, well, when they come, when you come here, they're going to be happy to see you because we, we prayed for you Sunday night. I said, they'll remember your name. They're going to look to you, Rel and Tamika. And, and that, that, that young couple that sat back there on Sunday morning and then uh, the, the Lady Mary that, that got saved on Sunday morning that came with uh, Migdalia, the Lady Charlene who had that little boy, and uh, Saeed or something like that. And, and, and what a blessing. I mean, uh, the, the Spanish lady, man, I don't even know the Spanish lady's name brought a visitor. She doesn't even speak English. That lady speaks no English, sits here week after week because those girls are up there in the junior church. And she speaks no English. That's incredible. I mean, she doesn't understand any of that. And she brought that English-speaking lady with her. And I talked to her yesterday on the phone. Her name was Layla. I said, I said, Layla, did you like the service? Yeah, I said, Layla, if you need a ride, we'll come get you. She goes, oh, no, you can't get me. I go, why? She goes, I live in West Philly. I said, Layla, if you need a ride, we'll figure out how to get you. All you got to do is call. I mean, that would be, that'd be, get to heaven and be like, Lord, you know, they lived seven miles from here. Nobody wanted to go. No, no, I know if we would go, we'd figure it out. Hey, listen, do good this week, folks. That's why God saved you, to glorify him. When you do good to people, people see it and they say, man, that must be, a, that's an unbelievable Christianity. Christianity gets no, not a good name because nobody's doing anything anymore. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for the word. Thank you for meeting with us tonight. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for speaking to us like you do. Help us to be different, Lord. Help us to gather around the, the table at home and pray for our services and pray for our sisters and brothers and have devotions in our homes again. Help us to pray in our cars as we pass somebody that's in desperate need on the street that we see every day. Instead of looking down upon them, Lord, help us to pray that somehow, some way, somebody could reach them. Lord, help us to be the salt of the earth. Help us to live for you and do something incredible. And Lord, help us to pillow our head at night knowing we live for you. And what a great feeling that is when a person pillows their head knowing they gave the day to God. While they were at work, driving down the road, or in their home, wherever it was, they, you were all about their business, and they were all about yours. Help us, Lord, with that. We love you. Give us safety as we go home. Give us good rest. Keep preparing us for this weekend. Prepare us for soul winning. Prepare us for church. Prepare us for the upcoming school year. Give folks strength for work. May God be seen at every job place tomorrow. May you do a mighty thing inside of us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.